So unfortunately, as a society, our default is that um, a child in need of care and protection mm -hmm. ends up in a children's home mm -hmm. institution. Mm -hmm. And an institution, no matter how good it is, is still an institution and not a family. It is, yeah. And sadly, we have many institutions who call themselves families, but mm. they're not. And so what I'd seen, even from my experience previously at Bernardo's, which was now kind of 10 years prior, but I'd, I'd stayed in touch with lots of those children and young people, mm. is very sadly, children and young people with huge potential, first of all, super disconnected from family. Mm -hmm. They leave the children's home at age 17, 18, 19, and they don't even know where to begin with family. Uh, and family is so important through all of our lives. Mm -hmm. So to, at that age, be so disconnected mm. um, and not have that sense of family community, mm. we've done them an injustice mm. at that point. Mm. Um, young people with um, very poor life skills, mm. because the way perhaps you and I were fortunate enough to grow up in a family home, and when you get to a suitable age, you're told, go to the shops and buy a loaf of bread. And, and you understand the process of you go to the shop, you hand over the 50 bob, whatever, you get your change, you take it home. <laughs> mm. You're beginning to manage mm. um, important kind of life skills and tasks mm. without even knowing it. Mm. Um, preparing food in the house, mm. um, the, how you host visitors, mm. um, how you interact with cousins and neighbors and siblings. and. All of those are life skills that help us as adults mm. figure out how to operate, whether mm. in marriage, in work, mm. in wherever. Mm. And in an institution, you simply can't replicate that. Yeah. And so, and we have many institutions who talk about, but we have small family units, but they're talking about a family unit, which is maybe 10 to 15 children. It's still managed by staff and not by a set of parents mm. um, even of institutions who institutions who talk about having house parents, but it's mm. not the same thing. Mm. Um, and so again, a huge injustice to these children that we're depriving them of that opportunity mm. to build those skills. Mm. And, and just globally, there's been this growing evidence base mm. that shows that institutionalization does not do right by the child. Yeah. Um, and that kind of, I guess, this, this growing kind of global evidence base coupled with what I'd seen through my own kind of relationships and networks. Mm, mm. Um, there was just this sense of urgency of we need to somehow address mm, this. Mm. Um, one of the, the there actually there was two pieces of evidence that were most striking. Mm. One was the percentage of children living in children's homes who had family mm -hmm. and that nobody had ever supported them to stay with mm, family. Mm. Um, and then secondly, that um, even for infants, because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people again will say, oh, well, for infants, it's fine because mm. they need a lot of care. Mm. For every month an infant spends in an institution, mm. they lose three months of development. Oh. So um, brain development, which of course impacts on how they learn once they start school. Mm -hmm. It impacts on how they then relate to other people as yeah, they grow. Yeah. The impact um, is long term. Yeah, so and cognitive various, skills, social emotional yeah. skills, um, everything. Mm. Um, and so realizing that actually there had to be this sense of urgency. Mm. Um, so we were able to to come together with a couple of other actors mm -hmm. in the space mm -hmm. and we helped to found the Alternative Care Association of Kenya mm -hmm. um, which brought together actors and uh, tried to rally kind of resources and funding mm -hmm. to help um, more broadly address mm -hmm. this issue, formed some kind of international partnerships with others working. Rwanda at that point had done an amazing job of closing down institutions mm -hmm. and particularly led through an organization called um, Hope and Homes. Um, mm -hmm. So we partnered with them. Um, others like uh, Lumos and Maestro came into the space um, mm -hmm. th as that developed as well. And, and so really building that network, connecting with government on the same thing. I think mm. that was our first experience of mm. kind of government engagement yeah. as well. Important. Um, you can't leave government out. Yes. And, and beginning to experience the, the highs and lows of working with government. Yes. <laughs> Establishing allies, mm. which is fantastic, but mm. then pushing back against like the politics mm. and bureaucracy within mm. the system and, and mm. trying to make things work for children. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, um, it, it was quite the, quite the journey and that became a big piece of our work. Um, and in fact, when I left uh, Vision Africa, that was um, almost the, the hardest piece to leave behind because yeah. it was just becoming so kind of vibrant and mm. there was a lot happening. Mm. And even now it's continued to be a piece of work mm. in the sector mm. um, that has grown. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, um, that's, that, that was some of the big piece. And, and Seed of Hope continued to grow and flourish. We began to connect with um, the Tivit Authority and again, just looking at that kind of government engagement perspective. <music>